Welcome again to day two of Breakfast from Roth. My name is Bob Babbitt. We are sponsored by Nitro and Flapjacked. Our next guest, 2012 Ironman World Champion, and in Challenge Roth, fourth, second, second, third. You've, you've been here a lot. You know this stadium that's right behind me. Pete Jacobs joins us. How you doing, Pete? Great, thanks, Bob. Yeah, I've uh, I've been here quite a few times before, but the stadium has gotten bigger since I was last year. Really? Everything has gotten bigger. Yeah, and uh, I'm really looking forward to coming back and racing this year. And uh, you know, it's just so so happy to be back here. And my wife Jamie's racing this year also. It's her first long distance oh. triathlon. So um, you know, it might be a bit of uh, household rivalry there. <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. You're spotting her a few minutes. I, I'm hoping. Yeah, we haven't worked out a handicap system yet. <laughs> I love that. So, so take us back a little, Pete. Um, you got into the. You were swimming for a long, long time. And when did you decide or make the move to triathlon? Um, it was pretty much after I finished high school. Okay. And um, I started doing my landscape apprenticeship, which went for four years. Yes. And in that first year, pretty much the end of that, with my first paycheck, you don't get paid much as an apprentice. Yes. I bought my first bicycle. And um, that was sort of where I started to go away from the surf life saving as yes. my main sport, yeah. which involves swimming, obviously, but board paddling and ski paddling in and out through and the surf. And that's huge in Australia. I mean, yeah. you, those guys make, make a good living. I remember the Uncle Toby series. Those they, guys they, were yeah, big stars. There's a couple that make a good living now, but it's not as big as it was back then. It was bigger back, then. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. back in the day. Um, so, you know, I was never going to pursue that professionally, never had any inkling. But as soon as I did my first... Um, Ironman race in 2002 Yes. as an age group competitor and I went exactly the time that I wanted to do plus transition time so I went 9.33 overall first time out yeah and it just seemed so easy <laughs> and I had it's still one of my best races all those races. people out there at 9.32 easy easy yeah it was still one of the best races I've ever had though yeah. so then I decided from that day right I want to do this and I want to win and I want to be the best in the world right. at this uh, the following year, I trained harder, went an hour slower. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that seems I, to be a pattern for a lot of folks. Yeah, well, that was a pattern for me for the next, you know, ten years. You know, so a lot of folks start in sprint distance; they sort of ease their way sprint, Olympic. But it seemed that you knew your calling was Iron Distance, Ironman Distance, right from the beginning. Yeah, I think the first season where I actually had my bike and I went to a bunch of races. You know, I did a bit of everything. I did a sprint, an Olympic, and a half distance. And it was in the half distance race where I really felt that that was suited to me. Yeah. I think something about the challenge really drew me in. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, from that moment, it was like, okay, I want to do halves next season. And so the following season, I went and did, you know, a bunch of halves. And then back in the day in Australia, you had to qualify to race Ironman Australia. Right. And so I did, and I qualified and stood up and took my spot, and all my older guys that had brought me into the sport that were in their 40s and sure. 50s that brought me into the sport, they all cheered, and my mum's jaw dropped and went, what? What are you, what are you, you standing up for? <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? And I took, walked up and grabbed my, my spot, and that was uh, you know, my lead into the, into the big distance. And what do you remember about your first time in Kona? And in terms of, did you feel that that event was going to be a good one for you right away? Because it, it didn't seem like it at the beginning. No, my, my first year, I, was, uh, I went over to America. I'd finished my apprenticeship. So then it was sort of like, right, let's, uh, let's now try a different career. Sure. And, you know, I went over to America and trained there. And I had a, had a coach who was an exercise physiologist at the time. And I loved the sessions and I got a lot of great benefit and adaptation from those very specific type of sessions right um but at the same time it it was too much for me and i went into the race and just was so flat on the day in kona that um i just couldn't get my heart rate up and i and i the bike ride was just so slow and and quite very emotionally tiring as well sure. and um and at that point i couldn't go on so i i dnf'd after the bike yeah sat down and had quite a few tears and um was just really a, a bit of a mess and um, you know, I had my mates there as well, and then we, you know, we sat around and drank some beers on the <laughs> pier while we watched the other finishes, and then uh, we went on a holiday, you know, with my mates as you do. So you, so you didn't stay down for too long? <laughs> no, I think Vegas and a cruise <laughs> around the Caribbean, I think that sort of picked me back up, and 
you know, so that was my first attempt, but I didn't go back the following year. I, I, I waited until, um, you know, my body was back and, and feeling better until right. I went back a couple of years later. So you're one of those guys who really goes by feel. I mean, are you, at this point, are you self-coached? Are you working with anybody? Yeah, I'm self-coached, but uh, it's very loose uh, use of the, the phrase word coaching. coaching. <laughs> um, I've def- definitely got... Uh, you know, ideas that um, between now and Kona that I, I need to now write down a program, which I haven't really done before. Yeah. Not so much a program, but in terms of I'm doing this session for this reason and write out those reasons for me so that I remind myself and don't make the same mistakes again and again and kind of right. get off track and do a session just because I feel good on that day. <coughs> Excuse me. And I yeah. do, and I do extra, right. uh, you know, just so I keep my mind focused on why I'm doing that session. Um, the sessions will still be fairly by feel right. in terms of um, which one I do on which day, but there will be some sort of structure with each week I will have a bunch of sessions and they'll yeah. have their limits and they'll also have their targets. So when you won in 2012, I mean, you, you, it seemed like there was going into that, you had your, you know, your 100K time trial, you knew exactly what you needed to do leading in. Were you coaching yourself at that point? I was coaching myself, um, but I went down and worked and just did you know, a couple of time trials right. um, with a group, with a guy that I was, who was mentoring me a little bit, uh-huh. Alan Pittman, yeah. and who you interviewed I on just interview- yes. radio yeah, not yeah. long ago. And um, yeah, so he, he's a great guy and uh, I went down with their crew. And for me, that was great that I had that camaraderie, a group session. Right. I'd done everything else on my own and they were just perfect timing for me to get with other people, yes. push myself into a, into a place that I wouldn't have pushed if I was on my own. Right. Um, so that worked really well. So I found that I definitely do need the time on my own and I definitely do need days where I've got people around me to sure. motivate me and focus help keep me focused and stuff so you know this year we're just throwing up some ideas the other day and i might actually maybe go to kona for you know 10 days or so Uh with a few others yep um you know in early september just to have that time of focus with other people um yeah so that might that might be something that i do and uh we'll see what happens you know very new ideas at the moment (laughs) we've got to get through this race before we really focus on kona so 2011, you take second. 2012, you win in Kona. And then it, it, how hard is it? Well, well, it's tough to go from second to first. That's a huge jump because all of a sudden everybody's talking to you. Everybody's thinking, okay, he finished second. There's no reason that he can't win. Um, but there's been a lot of people finished second and didn't win, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, going from second to first, how hard was that? Um, for me, it was. It, I found it easy um, because of, um, going second, definitely sponsors started to say, and companies came on board yes. and said, "We believe you can win." So, and I, but at the same time, getting second is a is a big difference to winning. So, <laughs> yes, if you win, a lot of people do want your time and your attention yep. and, and everything. Whereas coming second, you're you're still you're not the world champion. So I was able to get that support and uh, confidence from my my supporters. Um, without having all those other distractions of being the world champion. So, you know, I found it really kind of, for me, that year was really easy. Um, My focus was really um, peaking in terms of I I got second, you know, kind of without really putting everything I could into training. Mm -hmm. And the following year, I said, right, I'll just put everything that I can into it. And, um, you know, I really locked myself down in those last uh, few months, did everything that I could, and I wanted the win, you know, before I kind of was like, yeah, look, I believe it'll happen. Yes. But when I got second, it was like, right, that's the difference. That's what I need to do is tell myself I want this. And, uh, and that's what it was. Here, you've been second here a couple of times. And yeah. And this probably is the second behind Kona, probably the second mm. most important race in the world. Uh, is this a, is this an A list race for you, or is this? I know you're doing Ironman Switzerland next week, <laughs> so <laughs> nothing like doing two Ironmans back to back. How that, when you look at your readiness, is this is this an A race for you? Um, mentally, you know, I, I always wanted it to be an yes. A race. Yes. Uh, physically, I don't think I was I'm able to get in that shape. I just had a few ups and downs mm-hmm. the last you know four or five months. Yep. Um, I think I'm in pretty good shape. My focus has been pretty good. Um, and hopefully I'm coming to this relatively fresh. Mm-hmm. And that's how I race well. I yes. race best when I'm fresh. Best 
when I'm, uh, you know, happy and, and uh, motivated. Right. And, um, you know, I'm really excited about this race and the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm relatively fresh. I, I've always done well on this course. I love the atmosphere here. Crowds are great. Um, the crowds, the, just the vibe, the support that I get from the, uh, the organizers, sure. from Challenge. Um, you know, I think with all those factors behind me, you know, the fact that I don't feel that I have the fitness as such, you know, I'm not so worried about. I think the other factors will uh, carry me through for a, for a solid race. And, yes. you know, like it's, 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 it's a long day out there and anything can happen. You know, any race that has, you know, seven or eight of the best guys in the world, you know, you can kind of say, well, look, only half of them are going to be really good on the day. Yep. And then from that, only one guy can win. And, you know, it's, it's, everything's, you know, fairly open for uh on race day and this is one of those races where you know whoever wins is going up under eight hours <laughs> is that right i mean that's, there's a pretty much a given that this is a sub eight hour race which means it's going to be fast all day long that that always makes it uh that always is intriguing to me when you know that's okay uh, dirk baca won 752 last year mm. and we've we've had uh i think andreas's record is in the 740s mm. so <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, I haven't really focused on that. I focus more on about just um, how the how the day might right. pan out, you know, with uh, guys like Dirk and Luke McKenzie yes. um, and Neko Lanos, guys that are really consistent. Timo Brock, in, in, yeah. In this time of year, they're just so consistent, yeah, um, and consistent, you know, for the rest of the year, really. So yeah, and Timo Brock. So it's going to be. Um, a solid race and you know it'd be interesting to we to, to people kind of look around at each other and think hey you need to take a turn and not right. just sit on and yes maybe it slows down a little bit or a guy's just going to be constantly attacking one another to try and get away so it, yeah it's going to be a really interesting race and we'll see what happens and then there's guys like james kanama yes um you know yeah, that yeah. if there is a little gap in the swim and these guys do catch back up you know there's that kind of we've got to stay away from them or we ease up and they're going to catch us and exactly there's a lot of stuff in a, in a field like this with so many good guys there's a lot of different um possibilities on race day that uh will define the winner i think on how the race is is raced yes. rather than who's in the best shape you know coming into right. it i remember talking to you and I, I think it was after 2012 race that you you really felt that in 11 crowey made a little move and you were sort of sitting in the wrong spot when that happened and, and lost the group. And in 12, you were resigned to the fact, you know what, I like being at the front because then I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to worry about being in a draft zone. I can just keep, put my head down and go. Yeah. Is that with this, with this type of crowd, this is a similar field that you have in mm -hmm. Kona. Is that the, will that be a tactic for you, trying to be off the front a little bit? Um, for me, you know, I think having not uh, coming into it with feeling i don't have peak fitness mm. i think i'm gonna play it a little reserved yes. yeah just try and be the most efficient guy out there okay um be as aerodynamic as i can be as efficient as i can without those peaks right. and spikes of hard efforts uh, but you know it's going to be dictated by the guys on the front um so yeah it's it's more uh for me a, a tactical race of race of patience um things that i i need to practice and want to practice for Kona right. in terms of like you say positioning yourself on the bike so you aren't getting dropped when there's a break or you don't have to work too hard when there's a break so a lot of tactical things there that about positioning patience um, when you've got to put in an effort to minimize those uh, those peaks and spikes right. in your energy levels so what's what's uh you know we talk about winning races and how important that is i, I think one of your biggest victories in the last couple of years uh is is with a, a gentleman by the name of john mclean who was a you know the first wheelchair guy to finish kona first hand guy to finish kona swam the english channel r rode in the uh, the olympics uh, uh, Par paralympics he's done it all and uh, you hooked him up um uh, with ken ware down in noosa to basically see if he could help him since he was an incomplete paraplegic if he could potentially walk again yeah. and he now is training to do the triathlon uh, in october that he was training for 26 years ago when he was paralyzed yeah. and that wouldn't have happened if you hadn't put those two guys together uh and john is going to do that as an able-bodied guy you know he's going to be with with ski poles or canes or something like that but i mean when when something like that happens and you have an opportunity to put two great people together and and see the results of that that has to be pretty rewarding 
Um, yeah, I mean, just knowing John is rewarding, yeah, you know, is. as you would know. Just yes, um, very special. So, guy. for him now to be going through this other journey and to be part of that other journey, that yes. this incredible experience that he's going through, yeah, it's uh, it's really rewarding, and uh, you know, really solidified our friendship, and um, you know, it's great to be going along through it with him. Um, yeah, and it's not easy, all these other new things that uh, uh, he's got to go through. Um, right. But, you know, I know it's opened up a whole new, another door for him, for um, his sporting yes. athletic career, um, but also, you know, his speaking career, um, his motivational career kind of thing. Like, he's really got another kind of boost of life in many ways. And, uh, you know, so I, I get so much inspiration and motivation from john yeah and uh yes yeah, so I'm, I'm just really excited to see where it'll it'll take him well my favorite part is when you watch the video on 60 minutes seeing him going to stone to pick up his son at school <laughs> walking in and picking up his son or walking on the beach with his wife and his daughter i mean that's that's better than any race there is yeah absolutely and um you know it just goes to show you know there's there's things out there that we just don't fully understand yet right um but yeah ken Ware is leading the way in this sort of field of neuroscience and how the body can heal itself um yeah and it's just amazing it's amazing cool work stuff. yeah cool stuff well pete thanks for doing everything that you do it's great to have you here at challenge roth you would be your fifth time racing here you're always been top four second fourth second second and third we love that raider take us out We again are brought to you by Flapjack and Nitro. My name is Bob Babbitt. You are watching Breakfast from Roth. Hold on, everyone. We will be right back.